The World Series is finally here. We got the Houston Astros going up against the Philadelphia Phillies in what is a bit of a surprise, but also not a surprise. Because we all knew the Astros were the best team in the American League. But let's be honest, who saw the Phillies coming? Definitely not me. So as I'm a prediction man, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and try and predict who is going to win the 2022 MLB World Series. I'm going to break down every position and tell you who I think has the advantage. And then at the end, I'll give you my exact prediction, who I think is going to win and in how many games, along with World Series MVP. Why why not? So enough talking, let's start talking about these matchups. First and foremost, I think we have to start it off with the pitching. The starting pitching on both teams is really good, but in completely different ways. With the Phillies, you have some major, major top end talent. Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler are two of the 10 best pitchers probably in Major League Baseball, and they have been nasty in the postseason. The rest of the rotation, sketchy, definitely sketchy, although Ranger Suarez has looked good. For the Astros, you've got Justin Verlander, who's like a fine wine, only gets better with age, and is probably going to win the American League Cy Young Award. Framber Valdez is the most underrated pitcher in baseball. The dude is just a quality start machine. Christian Javier looked lights out in his five inning performance against the Yankees. And then you got other arms like Luis Garcia, Jose Urquidy, and Lance McCullers Jr. who can sprinkle in in different scenarios. So with the starting pitching, it's a little bit difficult because I think when Nola and Wheeler are on the mound, the Phillies have the better starting pitchers. But then you have games three and four. It's tough. I'm honestly going to say a slight edge to the Phillies because you know Wheeler and Nola are at least going to going to pitch in four games this series, and in those four games, they 100% have the pitching advantage. So it's ever so close, but I'm going to give the slight edge to the Phillies in the starting to pitching department. Wheeler and Nola, like I said, are some of the best pitchers in the game, and those guys being able to control this series is a huge, huge advantage. Now, as for the bullpen, we normally think of the Phillies bullpen as absolute hot garbage, but they're kind of just rocking with three guys right now that have been really good. Sir Anthony Dominguez has some nasty stuff. Jose Alvarado is a good left-handed reliever, and David Robertson is a veteran who's been there before and has looked pretty solid. Again, we start moving outside of those guys. It definitely gets a little bit more sketchy. Now for the Astros, I think they definitely have better bullpen depth than the Phillies. And I do think they just straight up have a better bullpen. Ryan Presley is really, really good. I feel like he's criminally underrated. Rafael Montero, really, really good, which I can't even believe I'm saying that as a former Met. He's a lights out reliever. Ryan Stanek is just absolutely disgusting this year. And then you could get a little Hunter Brown, little Hector Neris, former Philly, which is kind of funny. I'm going to give the slight edge to the bullpen here for the Houston. Astros. I do just think their bullpen is a little more consistent, a little more deep, and when you're in a seven-game series like this, I feel like it's just good to have more arms, and the Astros have higher quality arms out in the bullpen than the Phillies. Now to talk about the offense. At the catcher position, I think this one's pretty straightforward. For the Astros, you have Martin Maldonado and Christian Vasquez, who are fine. I mean, Martin Maldonado can't hit, but the Astros clearly know something. They're the smartest team in baseball. They continue to throw them out there. They understand that while Martin Maldonado can't hit, he's got value somewhere, and it's probably defensively. Christian Vasquez, I think is the better catcher, but again, put those two together. Still not as good as JT Realmuto for the Philadelphia Phillies. Realmuto just continues to show why he is the best catcher in Major League Baseball offensively, defensively, athletically. He is unbelievable. After what felt like a slow start to the season, he was able to turn it on at the end, and he finished with an 820 OPS, 20 homers, 20 plus doubles, hitting 270. I mean, the dude's an absolute stud, and again, he's great behind the plate. So yeah, JT Realmuto, clear advantage for the Phillies in the catching department. So right now, slight advantage for them. At first base for the the Phillies, you've got Reese Hoskins, who we know what Reese Hoskins is. He's a bad fielding first baseman who can hit for some power and he gets on base. There's no doubt about that. Take away my personal dislike of Reese Hoskins. I think he's a good ball player. At least he's a good hitter. Is he better than what the Astros have, though, at first base? It's weird because if you told me without postseason play, who's better, Yuli Gurriel or Reese Hoskins, I'm picking Hoskins every time. But you get Yuli Gurriel in the postseason and he just absolutely turns it on. The dude gets crazy. It just feels like he gets big hits. That being said, I don't don't think Yuli Gurriel is any better than Reese Hoskins. I, th I think Reese Hoskins is the better player. So once again, I am going to give that advantage to the Philadelphia Phillies at first base, but I do think probably one of the least important positions. Both of these guys, relatively speaking, are going to give similar value to their teams. I don't think it's a huge advantage. Where catcher, I think there's quite a big one there with JT Ramuto. Now at second base, this is where things I think start to change a little bit here. Gene Segura is a really, really good second baseman. He is the epitome of of consistent. Decent glove, decent bat, decent base runner, everything you want out of Gene Segura. He's pretty much above average at. Like, we're looking at, like, B- minus across the board. But for the Astros, you've got Jose Altuve, and Jose Altuve is the best second baseman in baseball. He had an unbelievably quiet good year, one of the better years of his career, and it doesn't feel like enough people are talking about it. Take away your hatred of Jose Altuve and the whole cheating situation, even though he was one of the guys who did the least. And this dude is an absolute stud. I mean, he had a 920 OPS this year with 28 home runs, 300 average. Jose 
Jose Altuve gets the clear, clear advantage here at second base for the Houston Astros, and he's a postseason god. This dude's so good. Gotta love Jose Altuve. I'm so back in on this guy. The cheating hurt me, but I'm back. At shortstop, it is the battle of two young guns here. Two great young shortstops who look like they have very, very promising futures. For the Houston Astros, you've got Jeremy Pena, who seems to have just fit in perfectly at shortstop after Carlos Correa left. I mean, literally, could you have found a better guy to fill it in right now? Jeremy Pena had a phenomenal start to his career in his rookie season. While he started off the year hot and cooled off towards the end, he's had a pretty decent postseason thus far, and the talent is through the roof there. I mean, he hits the ball hard, he runs fast, he is disgusting, disgusting defensively at shortstop. One of the players to watch, one of the more fun players in this entire series. But I also want to give credit to the Philly shortstop, Bryson Stott. Bryson Stott, I think, is going to end up being a very nice ball player out in Philadelphia. Now, is shortstop the position for him? Probably not. He does not have the glove like Jeremy Pena, but in the future, he'll be a good second baseman, I think, because I think he can definitely swing it. Now, the numbers this year were not great, but there are times and there's flashes and you watch this guy play and you go, oh, Bryson Stott understands what he's doing at the plate. I mean, he owned Max Scherzer this year. He had good at bats against all the guys in the postseason. Bryson Stott's a real ball player, but I have to give the advantage to Jeremy Pena. I just think Jeremy Pena right now is the better player. And I think at shortstop, just on the glove alone, he's going to be able to make an impact and he swings a really good bat better than Bryson Stott, I think as well. So we're going to give the advantage to Jeremy Pena and the Astros. Now at third base, I think this one's kind of fairly straightforward. Alec Bohm had a nice year. He's a hit for contact guy first, for sure. The power was not really there this year. He was basically a league average hitter, and we know defensively he's not a third baseman. It's rough over there. He can make a play, but he also sometimes make plays look really, really difficult. That shouldn't be. I'll reserve my judgment on the quality of player Alec Bohm is, but I'll tell you this. He is for sure not better than Alex Bregman. Alex Bregman is back, and especially when Alex Bregman gets to play at home at Minute Maid, he's dangerous. I mean, how lucky is Alex Bregman? In this series, he gets to play at Minute Maid in another band box in Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. I expect big things from Alex Bregman this series, a guy who I've got in my World Series MVP watch. Completely bounced back this year. Yes, the power numbers aren't up to what they were at one point in his career. I mean, he hit 41 homers in 2019, but I think we know why. Still an extra base hit machine, still plays fine defense at third base, and he's got the postseason pedigree. Yeah, Alex Bregman is a clear advantage here. Breggy, he's going to be hitting some Breggy bombs. Now, for the outfield, it's kind of where it gets weird because you have Jordan Alvarez, who's a DH, but has been playing a lot of left field. So where do we put Jordan? This postseason, he's been playing left field, so that's where we're going to put him. And that means he's going up against Kyle Schwarber, which this, this is a fun matchup. I mean, talk about two of the most prolific power hitters in Major League Baseball going head-to-head -head with each other, both who should be playing DH but aren't for different reasons. As good as Kyle Schwarber has been this year, I mean, 40-plus homers, the dude just cranks baseballs. He's had a bit of a rough postseason. And Jordan Alvarez is, well, Jordan Alvarez. He could be one of the best pure hitters in all of Major League Baseball. You can throw away the defense because both of them stink out there. Strictly at the plate, Jordan Alvarez is my pick. I mean, again, this is this is one of the best hitters in all of baseball, if not the. He's so unbelievably talented. Jordan Alvarez gets the advantage here. I mean, oh, he had a, he was a seven-win player as a DH this year, essentially. Seven wins just strictly off of hitting. 10-19 OPS, 37 home runs, and 470 at-bats. It's filthy. Disgusting. Not a real person. As for center field, I think this one's actually really close. For the Houston Astros, you got Chaz McCormick, who Chaz McCormick's interesting. Got a couple home runs in the postseason thus far. He's a decent little player. I'm not going to go too crazy, but I think Chaz McCormick is an above average center fielder. Solid defense as well. For the Phillies, you got Brandon Marsh. Brandon Marsh, really, really good outfielder in center field. Great defense. Offensively, eh, he's a little hot and cold. He struggled mightily in the NLCS, but he still plays that great center field. I think matchup wise, Brandon Marsh will probably, I don't know, it, it's, it's tough because he is much better defensively, but offensively, not so much. I think I'm probably going to give this one a slight advantage to Chaz McCormick. I think it's really close and really just could be a coin flip of whoever gets hot during the series, but my bet would be Chaz McCormick ends up playing better, and also Brandon Marsh probably won't face Framber Valdez. I just, I can't see that happening. Probably end up going with Veerling as well. Even that combo, I'm still taking Chaz McCormick ever so slightly. Then the last position on the field, still have DH left, which that's important. We have right field. Nick Castellanos going up against Kyle Tucker. Nick Castellanos is a great player, and I don't think the season that he had is indicative of the kind of player he is. I will say this, playing at Minute Maid is going to be kind of good for him. Now, I know he's a right center field power guy, but those Crawford boxes are just, they're up for grabs. I could see Nick Castellanos having a big World Series, another Dark Horse World Series MVP pick. But you're going up against Kyle Tucker, who is one of the better right fielders in all of baseball. I think another guy who's underrated just because you have a lot of talent out there, and Kyle Tucker, let's be honest, is probably the most boring choice in right field, but he plays good defense, athletic 30 homers, 800 OPS. The postseason hasn't been too kind to him this year, but he's performed well in the past.
fast. I think Kyle Tucker gets the advantage over Nick Castellanos, but it's weird because both of these guys are good. It's not like a third base where you have this big difference between Bregman and Bohm. I would say Tucker and Castellanos are relatively in the same range. It's just I trust Tucker to be more productive if you're making me choose over Nick Castellanos right now. So slight advantage to the Astros. And then the final position is going to be DH. And at DH, you've got Bryce Harper for the Phillies versus anyone not named Jordan Alvarez unless he's DHing. So we're going to say Trey Mancini and anybody else who could be. Unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. Unless it's Jordan, Bryce Harper has the advantage every single time. Bryce Harper, also one of the best hitters in baseball. So incredibly talented. Hall of Fame career path. Put the team on his back in the NLCS. Bryce Harper is an absolute stud. He's a beast, and I expect him to make a huge, huge impact in the World Series. He's just too talented not to. This is why he went to Philly. He was chasing the World Series. He got it. Will he be able to step up? That's yet to be seen, but I do think he gives the Phillies a clear advantage at the DH spot, unless he's going up against Jordan Alvarez, which I don't think that's happening. I think Jordan's playing left field. Bryce Harper, he's unbelievable. He's incredibly talented. No one can possibly call him overrated anymore. It's just, and you can't do it. He's so good. Now for my predictions for the World Series. I think this series is going to end up going six games because Nola and Wheeler, they just simply automatically make the series a little bit longer. When those guys are on the mound, they're going to be tough to beat. The Phillies offense is good. They're a feel-good story. But the Astros are the best team in baseball. They were the best team this season. They've played incredibly well. They've been running through the American League like it was nothing. They're looking for perfection. I don't think they'll get a perfect postseason, but I do think that the Astros will be the 2022 MLB World Series champions in six games over the Philadelphia Phillies, which I do believe means that they get to clinch in Houston, right? Which would be cool for them. I, I think the Astros are the best team. I think they deserve to win the World Series. And as fun and as hot as the Phillies have been, I just can't see them getting through this Astros team. These Astros are different. Dusty Baker finally gets a World Series. Come on, Dusty. You deserve it. World Series MVP? I think I gave you my hint earlier. It's going to be Alex Bregman. I think Alex Bregman's going to end up being the World Series MVP. I just got this feeling he's going to have a big series and make a lot of big plays for this Houston team. I'd love to know who you guys think wins the World Series down in the comment section below. Give me your predictions. Let me know who you think is going to win. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Make sure to follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.